Hola, my beautiful humans. This is Jasmine Castillo, and I bring stories and cases from the people of color community, bringing awareness of murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, two spirits, the LGBTQ community, Asian American, Pacific Islander, black indigenous people of color. These are their stories. So welcome to Hands Off, my podcast. I definitely have to unravel a lot of things that are in my mind right now. And of course, this is a unplugged, raw combo on what had occurred a few days ago in Uvalde, Texas. I don't want to go on a tangent, but I have a few things that I need to say about this. A true side of my opinions that hits something, something so close that hits home. I take this extremely personal and I'm hoping that there's a lot of people out there that think the same way. There's a lot of collective things that have piled on and piled on throughout the years. So let's get into it. This podcast episode is out of the ordinary. This is something that I usually don't do, but because it has hit home, the home of Texas, that occurred on Tuesday, May 24th. But me as a mother of three boys currently have a son that is in fourth grade and is 10 years old. So this I take extremely personal. I want to give a moment to read the beautiful children and the teachers that lost their lives at Uvalde Rob Elementary School. Alethea Ramirez, Alexandria Anea Rubio, Amary Jo Garza, Anibel Guadalupe Rodriguez, Eliana Cruz Torres, Eli Garcia, Eva Mireles, Irma Garcia, Jackie Jalen Cazares, Jaila Nicole Serguro, Jace Luvanos, Jose Flores, Leila Salazar, Makena Lee Elrod, Miranda Mathis, Mait Rodriguez, Nevae Bravo, Rogelio Torres, Tess Marie Mata, Uzziah Garcia, Xavier Lopez. I, as you probably are aware of with my podcast, I do not like to glorify or give honor or recognition or waste my breath on the person who inflicts pain towards others. There will be a small piece identifying who the person was. But for the majority of this podcast episode, I will be talking specifically about the stories behind these beautiful people that I've mentioned. A little background in regards to where Uvalde, Texas is located. Uvalde is a tight-knit community about 85 miles west of San Antonio and about 70 miles east of the U.S.-Mexico border in Del Rio. And there's approximately about 25,000 people that live in the Uvalde County. In a recent U.S. Census, about about 73% of the population is Hispanic or Latino, and about 50% of the residents live in their homes is where English and other languages are spoken. Robb Elementary School is in a residential neighborhood near the center of Uvalde. Now to the short clips of stories 
that literally just have a small piece of their lives. I know there is so much more that their loved ones, their parents, their grandparents could share, but I'm only able to share what I have available in articles and resources. Alicia Ramirez. She actually turned 10 last month. In the photos, identifying it is her birthday, there is actually a post by her father that he shared at the time of her birthday, where she had a t-shirt that read, Peace out single digits, I'm 10. Alicia loved drawing and wanted to be an artist when she grew up. Actually, she sent her one of her own drawings to the Doodle for Google contest, Alexandria Anea Rubio. Her mother identified Alexandria was one of the persons that had passed away on the Tuesday shooting. Ironically, this shooting occurred after an honor roll ceremony. In one of the posts, you can see Alexandria holding up her All A certificate. Alexandria's mother said that, quote, my beautiful, smart Alexandria Anea Rubio was recognized today for all a honor roll, end quote. And she also received a good citizen award, a Mary Jo Garza. So hours before this incident on Tuesday morning, a Mary actually posed for a school photo, smiling as she held up her own certificate celebrating her A.B. honor roll. Her father identified that they are thankful for everyone's prayers in searching for his baby. A Mary's father, shortly after midnight, wrote on, quote, She's been found. My little love is now flying high with the angels above. Please don't take a second for granted. Hug your family. Tell them you love them. I love you, a Mary Jo. Watch over your baby brother for me. End quote. Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez. Annabelle's family was among the others that were waiting for answers hours and hours after the shooting. And by seven o'clock on Tuesday, the family's Facebook updated that Annabelle was among the ones that were killed. Her sister wrote on Facebook, quote, my little sister didn't make it. She's not longer with us. My poor sweet little girl. End quote. Aliahana Cruz Torres. Late Tuesday night, grandfather updated ABC News that his granddaughter, Aliahana, was found amongst her other classmates. Aliahana was actually a softball player. She was pretty excited to play her final game that was scheduled the day of the shooting. Her aunt had mentioned that she was so excited that she was actually nervous about her softball game later on that day. And ironically, she was going to be announced as one of the all-stars in the final softball game. Her aunt told her that, don't be nervous. You got this. You're going to be good at it. Ellie Garcia Ellie was actually the second eldest of five girls in her family, and she loved helping around the house, loved cheerleading, basketball, and the movie Encanto. Her dream was to wear a purple dress for her quinceanera and become a teacher. Her grandparents were driving between hospitals and civic centers just to find an update about their granddaughter. They were one of the ones that had to wait for their daughter and son-in-law to be swabbed DNA to identify their granddaughter. By 9.30 p.m., they summoned the parents to a back room to inform, to inform them that their child was amongst the dead. Ellie loved to spend weekends with her grandparents, loved to help do outside chores like mow the lawn and make some tostadas and chalupas. 
and she loved to babysit her younger sisters. She even asked her grandfather to help out with his excavating work, and of course he said, when you get older. Eva Mireles. She was one of the adults that was a fourth grade teacher who worked for this district for all oh, about 17 years. Her husband, who was actually one of the police officers that responded to the shooting and was apparently shot at by the shooter, but was not injured. Eva's aunt had this to say, quote, My niece Eva lost her life protecting her students. It shouldn't have been like this. Teachers, parents, and students afraid to go to school or send their kids to school. End quote. Eva's daughter posted on Twitter that she is so glad that so many people know who she is and her beautiful face and to know what a hero looks like. Irma Garcia, a nephew on Twitter, identified that Irma was a fourth grade teacher and actually was going on her 23rd year as a teacher. Her nephew had this to say, quote, She sacrificed herself by protecting the kids in her classroom. She died a hero. She was loved by many and will be truly missed, end quote. Jackie Jalen Cazares. Jackie was actually related to Annabelle Rodriguez. They were both cousins. Jackie's father posted a tribute on Facebook, identifying that his baby girl will always be with them, that her passing was in vain, and that she would be at peace with the rest of the angels. The whole family will miss you forever, and that they all love you with all their hearts. Jayla Nicole Sergoro. Her mother told Univision that Jayla loved to dance and create videos on TikTok of her dancing skills. Her mother had a conversation with Jayla before she left for school. Her mother said, quote, I took her to school, but she didn't want to go. She told her father, can I stay home? I think she knew something would happen, end quote. Jayla is cousins to J.C. Luevanos, who was also killed in the shooting. They were both in the same class. J.C. Luvanos. His uncle posted a photo of Jayla and Jace in a Facebook that he's going to miss them like crazy. And he is so at a loss. But he wants to make sure that you know that you are loved and to fly high, beautiful angels. Jose Flores. Salazar's uncle confirmed with the Washington Post that his nephew, Jose, was killed in the shooting. And he also posted and identified in Facebook that he loves and misses him. In the photo, you can see him standing alongside with his nephew, Jose. You can see Jose grinning after he caught a fish in one of the photos. And in another photo, he is proudly showing his honor roll certificate under the Rob 22 banner. Layla Salazar, she was one of the last children to be confirmed in this tragedy. Layla also enjoyed dancing on TikToks, and she actually won six races at school for field day. She loved to swim on a post from her father late Wednesday evening. He wanted to watch her grow up. She had so much more to give. This was such a senseless act that crushed him and that he misses you very much, Layla. They lost their heart on Tuesday. In one of the Facebook posts, you can see Layla with her first place field day ribbons. Is that Layla enjoyed Guns and Roses song, Sweet Child of Mine. His father wrote that they would jam on the way to school, that was one of their things that they would do together. McKenna Lee Elrod. Father told ABC on Tuesday that he was looking for his daughter, McKenna. McKenna's father found out through Facebook that his daughter had been killed. Miranda Mathis. 
Family members told Fort Worth Star-Telegram that her brother was also attending the same school, but she died in her classroom. He survived the shooting. Her relatives posted, quote, We loved you dearly. I'm so sorry this happened to you, end quote. Maite Rodriguez. One of Maite's cousins wrote on Facebook that they had, unfortunately with heavy heart, lost their cousin in a senseless shooting and that their hearts were shattered. Maite was actually one of the honor roll students in front of the school banner. She was one of the three students that actually received an honor roll certificate hours before the shooting. Nevae Bravo. Nevaya's cousin actually posted on social media about the shooting and asked for help locating Nevaya. And unfortunately, by 9 o'clock that evening on Tuesday, she updated her Twitter saying that they unfortunately found her as one of the victims from the tragedy at Robb Elementary. Rogelio Torres had their entire family wait 12 hours after the shooting to find out that he was amongst the ones that were killed in this tragic shooting. His aunt told KSAT, quote, We are devastated and heartbroken. He was a very intelligent, hardworking, and helpful person. He will be missed and never forgotten, end quote. Tess Marie Mata her sister updated a Facebook post that she was one of the monks killed in the shooting. Her sister said, quote, I honestly have no words, just sadness, confusion, and anger. I'm sad because we will never get to tag team on mom and dad again and tell each other how much we mean to each other. I'm confused because how can something like this happen to my sweet, caring, beautiful sister? End quote. You can see a series of pictures of Tess flashing peace signs, snuggling up with cats, and standing in front of a large heart mural. Yusea Garcia. Yusea was one of the youngest from the same classroom. His grandfather updated Associated Press, quote, the sweetest little boy that I've ever known. I'm not just saying that because he's my grandkid, end quote. Xavier Lopez, his mother updated the Washington Post that her son was one of the students amongst. She says, quote, he was funny, never serious, his smile, that smile I will never forget. It would always cheer anyone up, end quote. He was the third person that received his honor roll certificate hours before he was killed. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the timeline, and I will try to be as short as simple. This was not just a sporadic thing that had occurred. This was something that was escalating as the days and weeks had gone by. Hints of questionable behavior, sending posted pictures of guns and ammunition to random people, not attending school because of being bullied on what they wore or their financial status. There is a lot of moving parts. I myself, I have two teenagers. I am quite aware of the situations that can go from one extreme to the other. And there is many ways that you can see the signs to prevent something like this from happening. But we'll try to go through the timeline. So on May 24th, 10.15 a.m., Salvador Ramos and his grandmother had a physical altercation where he critically shot his grandmother. There has been some conflicting reasons based on the argument. Whichever it may be, does not give anyone the reason to shoot anyone in the face. The way they resolve that situation without escalating it to a point is to walk away. No one's life is worth jeopardizing 
over a conversation about school or a phone bill. And unfortunately, that wasn't the decision that was made. Sources says officers went to the home following the shooting to investigate and found Ramos' grandmother. And currently, she is fighting for her life in the hospital. 10.45 a.m. After shooting his grandmother, he left the home. Authorities stated that he was wearing a plate carrier with no ballistic armor. 11.42, lockdown protocols were activated throughout the building. 11.55, San Antonio Fire Department immediately dispatched to Uvalde in response to the school shooting. Salvador Ramos was identified as a high school dropout. He did not have a juvenile record, does not have a criminal history, and he does not have a report of mental health history. So let's push that to the side here. Because I know that's going to come up later when a lot of people are going to reevaluate in regards to mental health situation. 1230, Texas Governor Greg Abbott held a news conference identifying 19 students and two teachers were involved in this tragic incident. He also praised the law enforcement for the quick response to save lives by killing the gunmen. I know there was some instances in previous articles that there was another person involved that has been ruled out the person who was involved and only involved was the 18 year old salvador ramos who was killed on scene things that i needed to address as well is that early in the articles there was a person who was identified incorrectly displaying the person's photos and identifying that this person was the shooter. This person has gotten multiple threats and harassments because of it. This person's name is very similar to Salvador Ramos. This misinformation was spreading, saying that this person was a transsexual leftist illegal alien. Let's scratch that off the top of the list, shall we? Salvador and this other person that was misinformation on the identity. They are two different people. The person that is accountable for the actions that occurred on May 24th was killed on scene. New York Times actually identified that Ramos had an acquaintance in high school that stated Ramos missed a lot of classes. He struggled to get along with other classmates, had very little amount of friends. Um, He even had a speech impediment, was bullied, and... There was even a photo of him wearing a black eye liner and he was ridiculed by using derogatory terms for a gay person. And this was also identified in Washington Post. Officials say that Ramos actually legally purchased two guns over a three-day period in the month of May around his 18th birthday. And I know you probably were asking yourself, why was Ramos actually living with his grandparents? Well... Ramos actually got into screaming matches with his own mother. Um, And he often retreated to his grandmother's house after the big fights, according to sources. Another source identifies that his mother was dealing with a on-again, off-again drug matter. And so Ramos was living with his grandparents at the time of the shooting at Robb Elementary. Ramos himself was actually a Uvalde resident He was a student, was a student, till he dropped out at Uvalde High School. And Ramos is a U.S. citizen. So let's scratch the immigrant laws or the spew of derogatory or insultive slurs about Latinos and Hispanics and people who are of immigrant background. This story has nothing to do with that. And I'll explain why I'm going on this rant about this. So, based on his Facebook posts, were actually posted 30 minutes before he got to school. So, based on what Texas Governor Greg Abbott identified in a press conference yesterday, is that Ramos actually posted three separate posts. The first one was actually posted 30 minutes before going to school. The third one was posted 15 minutes before the attack on the school identifying that he was going to do something in this school. So roughly, he was roughly 40 minutes in this school. And during that time, 
he barricaded himself in a classroom. And all the beautiful children and the beautiful heroic teachers that lost their lives were all from the same classroom that he decided to barricade his ass in. In other sources, parents and grandparents were smashing windows to retrieve the children out of the school during this whole time. A neighbor across the street was actually yelling to the law enforcement and law authority to go in there. Go in there. What are you waiting for? Because this person actually saw Ramos walk into the school with an AR-15 in hand. This border patrol officer had difficulty breaching the barricade. The gunman exchanged fire with the school officer. The classroom door was actually locked and requested a staff member to open the room with a key. I will actually have a clip of one of the children that survived the shooting that was in the classroom at the time. They were nice teachers and they, um, they went in front of my classmates to help to save them. This child identified that there was an officer shouting down the hallway if anyone had needed help. This boy said, quote, When the cops came, the cops said, Yell if you need help. And one of the persons in my class said, Help. The guy overheard and he came in and shot her. The cop barged into the classroom. The guy shot at the cop and the cops started shooting. End quote. So let's get into the nitty gritty in regards to this is something that's going to probably make me lose followers or gain followers. To me, this is actual proof that this system is corroded. Firearm deaths are the fixture in American life. There were 1.5 million, 1.5 million of them between 1968 and 2017. That is higher than the number of soldiers killed in every U.S. conflict since the American War for Independence in 1775. Just in 2020 alone, 45,000 Americans have died, either by homicide or suicide. And this is a quote from BBC. The issue is highly a political one. Pitting gun control advocates against sectors of the population fiercely protective of their constitutionally enshrined right to bear arms. Just the U.S. ratio alone is 120.5 firearms per 100 residents. That's up 88 per 100 in 2011. Surpasses all the other countries around the world. Just looking at the numbers. These are facts. There have been at least 77 incidents of gunfire on school grounds across the country, resulting in 14 deaths and 45 injuries so far this year. Six of these incidents took place in Texas. Six! And even based on sources from the FBI, the ODMP.org, NLEOMF.org, the edweek.org, and the chds.us, there are more minor deaths in school shootings than there are on-duty officers by gunfire deaths in 2022. Officers on duty gunfire deaths between 17 to 21, while minor deaths in school shootings are 24 as I speak. We are the top 10 civilian gun-owning country. And because of that, an international comparison of gun-related killings as a percentage of all homicides based on CDC, House of Commons Statistics in Canada, Australia Institute of Criminology of 2020. In the UK, 4% of gun-related killings. Australia, 13%. Canada, 37%. Do you know what the percentage of gun-related killings of homicides in the U.S. of 2020? Take a guess. 79 percent. 79. This is not an immigration problem. This is not a 
race problem. This is not combative with the rights to bear arms problem. This is a safety issue. This is a gun control issue. The movement of making our schools a safer place, our churches a safer place, our businesses a safer place, our homes. And I know I will get a lot of unfollows and blow back on this. I know my rights as an American citizen, and I know I have the right to carry a gun if I choose to do so, but there should be at least some type of limitations as to the type of guns that are purchased. I know this is a considered a hot topic in the news media for many years of this infamous AR-15 or any other type of assault rifles. I believe every person should have the right to protect and stand with their amendments. But we draw the line when it comes to having particular assault rifles and other over-the-top weapons that are easily purchased by persons under the age of 21, lead a running theme between the ages of 18 and 25. And I get it, yes. You are allowed to carry a gun when you are enlisted in military. I get that. But where do we draw the line when it comes to children? And yes, I will call them children because I'm a mother that has children. Children between the ages of 18 and 25. These children who have access to purchase assault rifles and other weapons that are definitely not used for hunting purposes. Well, not the hunting purpose that you believe it to be used for. In a sense of animal hunting versus human hunting is beyond mind-blowing on the understanding on how people perceive that a weapon should be used for. And if you want to blow up my emails and my social media pages, that's fine. I stand where I stand and you can kick rocks. 18-year-olds do not need assault rifles. So if you are still listening to this podcast, you would love to find ways to support and donate. I will have GoFundMes of the victims from the Rob Elementary shooting in my show notes as well as places where you can donate blood and find ways to volunteer and help out in the crisis that has unraveled in Uvalde, Texas. I would like to say for every kid and parents to be safe. Thank you for listening to Hands Off My Podcast. If you are enjoying the podcast and you'd like to support the mission, I do have a Patreon membership that will help the cause and bring more detail on cases and stories from the people of color community. If you yourself has a lost loved one or a story suggestion, please don't hesitate to contact me at email. Hands off my podcast at gmail.com. And if you are only able to support in another way, please give this podcast a five star rating on Apple or Spotify. And continue to listen to upcoming episodes every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcast. Dios te bendiga.